The Nintendo Switch has got some huge news that reveals some bold plans for Nintendo this year. A popular exclusive for the PlayStation 4 has been supposedly leaked for the Nintendo Switch, and we've got some interesting news to cover regarding Zelda Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask rumored to be releasing later this year on the Nintendo Switch. Hey everyone, Wes here. Welcome back to another Nintendo Switch news video, and it goes without saying that Nintendo has been preparing for a pretty massive 2021, but according to a new report from Nikki, this year might be bigger than we all expected. According to the report, Nintendo will be raising its Nintendo Switch output to a record 30 million units this fiscal year, with an attempt to make the most out of the stay-at-home demand, says the report. They then go on to mention that Nintendo has approached multiple parts suppliers about accelerating production. This was according to people with direct knowledge of the matter who have verified these plans to expand the output. 30 million more units is an absolutely insane number, especially when you consider since the Switch was released, they've sold roughly 80 million units as of the end of 2020. If you factor in this year's projected totals, the Nintendo Switch could reach 110 million units sold, surpassing the Nintendo Wii. And on top of that, Nintendo plans to do that without a revised unit that we know of. Nintendo is anticipating another massive wave of consumers, which begs the important question. What is the main reason people go out and buy gaming consoles? They do it for the games and furthermore, the first party exclusive games. Now it goes without saying, we have no idea what Nintendo's plans are for the holiday game of 2021, but with 30 million extra units, you best believe it's going to be a big one. The most likely candidate is the sequel to Breath of the Wild, but we could easily see a wild card like Mario Kart 9. Now, the other thing we have to mention is the fact that we are in the fifth year of the Nintendo Switch life cycle, and we have yet to see a prominent price cut. With a game like Breath of the Wild 2 and a price cut, 30 million units doesn't seem that crazy. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why would Nintendo do a price cut if the Switch is selling as well as it is? And the likely answer to this lies with the Nintendo Switch revision. According to the Nikki article, Nintendo is also expected to add a higher end model with the higher image quality, and this will be the first additional model of the Switch since the Nintendo Switch Lite, which was released in September of 2019 and made it more portable. Now, if we do end up getting a Nintendo Switch Pro or a Switch revision, it would only make sense for Nintendo to cut the price of the original Nintendo Switch. Now, I want to preface that by saying don't expect it to be anything significant, but it is bound to happen eventually. Either way, though, 30 million units is not something to take lightly, and it further proves Nintendo has plans to make this year one of their biggest yet. This report from Nikki has major implications for Nintendo's upcoming announcements, and I am beyond excited to see Nintendo's plans unfold, hopefully starting with an E3 2021 Direct. Moving on to our next bit of news, we have a new leak that has surfaced for a port of the PlayStation 4 exclusive, Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. Now, this leak is actually coming the way of the ESRB rating website. Obviously, if you don't know what the ESRB is, it's basically the organization that rates games for release in the US. The organization recently rated Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom, for release on the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch Lite. Now, as of right now, Nino Kuni 2 has not been announced for the Nintendo Switch at all. So could this leak mean that we will get Nino Kuni 2 on the Switch? It's hard saying, and usually it's not worth reading into these leaks from the ESRB as it could be a simple error. Now it is worth mentioning that Nino Kuni 2 was released back in 2018 and Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch is already available on the Nintendo Switch. So it does make sense for the sequel to be also ported over. Now we haven't had any official word from Bandai Namco, but if this leak is indeed real, then I am sure Bandai Namco will be announcing it sometime soon, hopefully during the next Nintendo Direct. Now, for those of you that are looking for a new game to buy on the Nintendo Switch, you might look into getting four of these prominent Nintendo Switch first-party titles that are currently on sale on Amazon and Best Buy. These four Nintendo Switch first-party titles are $20 off on Amazon and GameStop right now. Fire Emblem Three Houses, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, Super Mario Odyssey, and Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. It's also worth mentioning that not only are these discounts available physically, but they're also digitally available as well. So if you've been waiting for the perfect time to pick up Super Mario Odyssey, I strongly recommend you buy it right now because not often are you going to get sales like this. Now we have to talk about another story that's been gaining some steam among the community in regards to the Zelda 35th anniversary. Prominent Nintendo insider and leaker man Nate the Hate discussed his predictions for the upcoming Zelda 35th anniversary, where he has stated once again that he believes we will still be getting Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess on the Nintendo Switch, celebrating the 35th anniversary of the franchise. 
In the latest episode of his podcast, he stated that he believes a collection for Zelda will include both Wii U versions of Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD with minimal updates on the Nintendo Switch. And Nate Drake is also fairly confident that both Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask will be available by the end of the year for the Switch digitally via the Nintendo Switch eShop. Now, one thing that I do have to say is Nate has had quite a few correct predictions, so I think what he's saying holds some weight. Obviously, take it with a grain of salt, but it's not something that's that crazy to think about. Nintendo knows if they release anything Zelda on the Switch, it will perform well. And if we do end up getting an announcement or release date for Breath of the Wild 2, it would only make sense for Nintendo to capitalize on the hype generated by that announcement. Now, as much as I was hoping for a Legend of Zelda 35th Anniversary Direct, it's likely not going to happen at this point, especially after the announcement of Skyward Sword HD. I don't think a 35th Anniversary Direct is fully off the table, but it's not looking very good, especially after that big announcement. In the meantime, we will just have to wait and see what Nintendo decides to do. Either way, I'm excited to see these games on Nintendo Switch. I think Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask could literally release anytime Nintendo wants. They could hot drop it tomorrow and they would still perform really well. Now for Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD, I would imagine that they would do a much bigger announcement. Maybe they could bundle them together for both $60. I think that would probably be the best strategy, but this is Nintendo we're talking about. So they will likely release as standalone games on the Nintendo Switch with the price tag of $40 each. Now for our last bit of news for the day, according to Christopher Dring on Twitter, new Pokemon Snap comfortably beat Returnal to top the UK box charts this week. The game's physical launch sales are more than four times what the original game managed way back in September of 2000, which is as expected. Now, it didn't really shock me that Pokemon Snap beat Returnal either, because at the end of the day, it's a Pokemon franchise game going up against another game that not many people really know about. So no shocker there, but it's pretty exciting to see Pokemon Snap do well. Hopefully it continues on that success, but I guess only time will tell. Thank you for watching. This has been Wes. And I will talk to you on the next video.